All right, if you'll take your Bibles and join me, we're going <clears> to <throat> turn back to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Let me begin by having you picture in your mind one of the star athletes of today, one of the big names in athletic. Can you think of what some of them? They are people who are, you know, well-known everywhere they go. People want their autographs. They've risen to the top of their field. They're Even among professional athletes, they're the highest out there. Uh, they get all sorts of attention and money and praise. Uh, but we always want to remember they didn't start off that way. They just started off as ordinary people. Many of them raised in ordinary families, ordinary parents, ordinary brothers and sisters. But at some point in life, they started rising up and excelling in their field of athletics until they just went higher and higher and higher and higher until people started calling them a star. Why would we call someone who makes it to the top of their field a star? Because like a literal, literal star, they are shining bright among everything else. They stand out. How many of you have dreamed as a youngster or young person of becoming a star someday, maybe a movie star, athlete, or you know, standing out? I think a lot of people do that. Um, is, is that bad? Is th that's you know, could be, you know, pretty conceited and vain. I want to be the center of attention, have everybody praise me. But on the other hand, shining brightly in your field for the glory of God, that's not a bad thing. In fact, you could actually say that is exactly what God made you to be. Uh, God made you, as you are here on earth, very much to shine like a star in this world. God made you to be that way. We're going to be looking at that this morning. We're going to be returning to our study in the book of Genesis and coming today to the days three and four of the creation week in which God makes the stars, among other things. And we're going to find as we look at the reasons why God made the stars in the heaven, many of those very same reasons are the reasons why he made human beings. The similarities between the reasons the stars are up there and the reasons we are here are very similar. I was struck by that this week. We're going to look at that this week. And that means as you go out into the evening sky, let's say this week, and you look up and you look at all the brilliant stars up there, realize that there's a kinship between those and you. There's a kinship. Because you and, and those stars share many of the very same purposes for why you were created. It's true. Do you know what those purposes are? And are you fulfilling those purposes? Because People are looking for the meaning of life. Fulfilling your purpose in the world is what brings meaning to your life. So we're going to look at that this morning and remind ourselves why we're here. And many of those same reasons are why they are there. So today, four ways people share similarities with stars. We're going to be looking at that. And let's read uh, through the third and fourth days of creation, starting with the third day uh, at verse 9, Genesis 1, verse 9. Let's read that. Follow along as I read. Then God said, Let the waters below the heavens be gathered in one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation. Plants yielding seed, and fruit trees on the earth bearing fruit after their kind with seed in them. And it was so. And the earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed after their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in them after their kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, a third day. So here we have the third and fourth day. By way of review, on day one, God creates an empty world, covered with water in complete darkness. Imagine that. An empty world covered with water and it's completely dark and nothing else exists. There's no universe, there's no sun, there's no planets, there's no galaxies, it's just there. That's all that exists. And then once God does this, it says, but the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. He's there ready to act, ready to work upon this, this formless void of a world. And the first thing God does is he says, let there be light. And there was light. 
And in that, we see the three members of the Trinity all working together for the very first time in the biblical record. The one hovering is the Spirit of God. The one speaking is God the Father. And the one creating is the Son, Jesus Christ. He's the one who actually does the creating that takes place. And that's talked about several times in the Bible in Hebrews 1.3. Through the Son, God the Father made the universe and everything in it. In John 1.3. All things came into being through him, Jesus. And apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. And then this wonderful verse. Take time to pick this verse apart sometime this week. Colossians 1, 16 and 17. By him, Jesus, all things were created, both in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. And in him, all things hold together. Wow. The Spirit hovered, the Father spoke, and Jesus created. And Jesus' word still keeps together everything, holding everything together until that day that Jesus will speak and everything will be let loose and dissolved and then reconstructed into a new heaven and a new earth. You know, this type of stuff sounds like fairy tales when you talk to the a lot of the scientific community today. God says, this is really what happened, and this is what's going to happen in the, in the future. Here's the truth about where we came from and where we're going. We could spend the rest of the day there, but we need to move on. <clears throat> so when God created light on that first day, where did that light come from? It doesn't say where that light came from, but we know where it did not come from. It did not come from the sun, moon, and stars because that happens later on day four. So God says, let there be light, and something lit up. But it wasn't the sun, moon, and stars yet. Where did that light come from? Well, 1 John gives us a clue. It says in 1 John 1, 5, God is light, and there is no darkness in him at all. When the Bible says, uses the word light, it uses it in two senses. One, one is in a literal, bright sense. God is bright. And then another sense that the, where the Bible uses the word light is in a moral sense of moral purity. So God is pure, and in him there's no sin at all. Which is this refers, referring to? Well, really, both are true of God. There's many passages in the Bible where it says that God himself is just bright. And we read about a lot of those in Revelation. It says in Revelation 21 and 23 at the end, the city of New Jerusalem has no need of the sun or moon for the glory, the brightness of God illuminates the city, and the Lamb is its light. The new world is going to have a sun and a moon. <clears throat> But it's not going to be, they won't be the sources, the main sources of light. God himself will be the main source of our light. It says in Isaiah 60, No longer will you have the sun for light by day, or the, for, nor for brightness will the moon give you light, but you will have the Lord for an everlasting light. God himself is literally bright, and in these future days, he will be our literal light of the whole world. Uh, but the second definition is also true of God, that God is pure, and uh, in him, when it says, he is light and in him is no darkness, that can also be meant in him is purity and there is no sin in him at all. And that is, of course, what we know is true. And because he is sinless, he who is light is able to lead us out of darkness into light. And that's what Isaiah 9 will be reading these verses uh, in the coming Christmas season. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in the dark land, a light, or rather the light, the light will shine on them. And what light is that? Well, Jesus said, John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And again, that's talking about literal brightness, but moral brightness. We live, look at our headlines, we live in moral darkness. And all that's going on in, in the major events of our world today are because this world lives in an impure, sinful state. But Jesus says, I am the moral light who can lead you out of that darkness. 
If you today are looking for meaning and purpose of life, if you're looking for hope, you have it. Jesus Christ is the hope of this world. In him, we have the ability to get out of our darkness and into light. Uh, he is the one who is shining the way to heaven, shining the way to peace, shining the way to forgiveness. But we have to rouse ourselves and follow him. You have to rouse yourself and follow him for the rest of your life. As you do, you will walk out of darkness into light, into the, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Have you done that? That is the only hope of this world, is following Jesus, the light of the world, out of darkness and into light. If you've not been following Jesus, seriously, start today. That he is the hope of your life and the hope of the world. Well, so on day one, God creates this dark planet covered with water. It says, let there be light, and there's light. Now let's jump to day three. On day three, he... It says in, in verse 7, Let the waters below the heavens be gathered into one place, and let the dry land appear. So all this water now is sinks, and the continents rise up. And that this is explained very clearly in Psalm 104. Look at this, where it talks about both the first and the third days of creation. Uh, it starts with day one. It says, God, you placed the world on its foundation so it would never be moved. You clothed the earth with floods of water, waters that covered even the mountain. And then it jumps to day three. At the sound of your rebuke, the waters fled. At the sound of your thunder, it fled away. Mountains rose and valleys sank to the levels you decreed. Then you set a firm boundary for the seas. So here we have a planet covered with water in complete darkness. God said, let there be light. And then on day three, the waters recede, the land then rises up, and now you have continents. And God wastes absolutely no time filling those continents with green uh, vegetation. It says in verse 11, with vegetation and plants and yielding seed and fruit trees, let the earth be covered with those things. And note that the vegetation of the earth, God didn't speak into existence like he did the light. Remember he said, let there be light, and it was. Here, it says that the earth then sprang forth with these things. So there must have been a, a outrageous, sudden growth of supernatural speed of, as plants and trees just rose up out of the ground. And now you've got all the continents of the world covered with green vegetation. And God saw that it was good, it says. <clears throat> then came day four. Uh, look at verse 14 and read with me. We'll read day four. Then God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to, to separate the day from the night. Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars also. God placed them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth and to govern the day and the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning, a fourth day. So why do the stars exist? Well, God says they exist because he spoke them into existence. It talks in the Psalms in Psalm 33, 6. The heavens were made by the word of the Lord and all the stars by the breath of of his mouth. He spoke and created those galaxies beyond galaxies beyond galaxies that astronomers still can't find the end of. Billions and billions and billions of stars. God just spoke, boom, and there they are. It says in Psalm 147, 4, he determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. He's got billions of names, trillions of names. Each one has a name. So God spoke, and the sun, moon, and stars existed, but that's how they came into existence. I'm asking the questions, why do they exist? Why did God make them? What is the purpose God made the stars? Well, this passage tells us at least four different reasons God made the stars that are above us. And as I said at the beginning, 
A lot of the same reasons they were created was why he created human beings. So we can learn about a lot of our purpose in the world by looking at why God made the stars. You know, if you ask people today, what is your purpose? A lot of them have no clue what their purpose is. And let me ask you, what is your purpose? What is your purpose? A lot of people say, well, look, I'm just trying to do a job so I can pay the bills, so I can survive and maybe find a little bit of happiness. Boy, if that's how you're living, Jesus said, isn't life more than food? Isn't, isn't it more than just surviving? And the answer is, of course. You were made for a very important purpose. You were made for a great purpose in this world. And don't reduce it to you know, just surviving so you can live another day. That's like animal level life. That's not what God made you to do. As I said, if we look at the stars, they remind us of different reasons for the same reason that we were created, they were created. So right now, let's, and none of these are brand new to you, but they're good to remind ourselves because we can get caught up in the race that we're trying to do each day and forget what, are, what is this all about? Why are we doing this? And are we on track? Do you know your purpose in this world? And are you fulfilling that purpose every day? That's the way to find meaning in life. You're wa walking around thinking, you know, what is this all about? Why are we doing this? It just feels also meaningless. Then you've lost track of your purpose. So allow this rest of the sermon to remind you of your purpose here on earth. And then grab a hold of that and do it. And that will be the way you find meaning in life. So let's look at the four purposes that God has for both stars and people. Um, first, verse 14. We go back to say, God says, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to what? To separate the day from the night. All right, now remember, the light illuminating the world as God is saying this is probably God himself. Okay, So you've got the darkness here and God is over here and there is a part that isn't being lit, maybe on the other side of the world or the moon, or what, well, there's no moon, on the other side of the world. So there is a separation, but God is doing it at this point. And God says on day four, you know what? Let's hand that off. Let's hand that off to the job of the sun, the moon, and the stars. So no, no longer will I be lighting everything. We'll let them do, do doing that. And now here's darkness, but here are the sun, moon, and stars handling the light part, the darkness part. And now there's a separation between the two. God made them to shine in the dark. And does that sound familiar to you? Yeah, the parallel between them and us is exactly the same. Jesus, when he was here in the world, he said, I am the light of the world, the moral light to lead people out of darkness. He is the pure and perfect one. He was there. And yet, when he left the world, what did he do? He handed that over to us. He says, you are the light of the world. Now shine. Because you are the ones who are now, like the sun, moon, and stars, took God's the Father's place, now you take Jesus' place. And that won't be permanent because Jesus is coming back and he will again will shine just as God the Father is coming back and he will shine and take the place that he, the, the, where the sun, moon, and stars took over for him. He's going to take that back one day in the future to be literally bright. So Jesus is coming back and he will then be the, the pure light of the world, brightness and morally. Uh, but in the meantime, our job on this planet is to shine the light. And that is the first way that we share similarities between us and the star. And your insert, number one, to shine light in the dark. That's why you exist. That's why the stars exist, to shine light in the dark. Are you shining in the dark? God says that is a purpose he gave you. Are you shining in the dark? And the question is, well, how do you know if you're shining in the dark? I mean, are you doing it? I don't know. What does it mean that I'm doing the way you know if you're shining the right way is to look at your actions and your words. The well-known passage in Matthew 5, Jesus says, No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, everyone who lights a lamp puts it on a lampstand. Then it shines, the light shines on everyone in the house. And in the same way, let your light shine in front of people. Then they will see, here it is, your good works and praise your Father in heaven. So what does shining your light in the world mean that you're actually doing? You're speaking good words and you're doing good deeds. That's what it means to shine your light. 
God says, that's the reason I made you in this world, to get up every day and go to your job and go to your family and go to your community, go to the, the church and speak good things and do good things. That's what I made you to do. How often do you see that out there as you're going about your job every day? How many people are doing good things? I see three categories. There's people who are doing outright bad things. There are people who are just kind of in the middle and they're not really contributing very much at all. And then there's some people doing good things with the words they use and with the actions they do. That's where you're supposed to be every single day. Don't fall in with the crowd. God says, I made you like a star in the night sky to shine brightly and say, wow, look at that person. Look at the way they talk. Look at the way they act. That's what you were meant to do. That's your purpose in this world, just like the stars. To go out there every single day and the way you speak and the way you act, that you stand out as being good. Is that the way you're living? Could you do a better job in the way you speak or in the way you act? Then do that today. Take hold of the meaning, the purpose for which you were created and do that all day long. You, it, it will be exhausting. And you will be very different from all the other people around you. But you want depth of purpose and meaning to your life? That's where you're going to find it. That's where you're going to find it. Uh, why don't we all just do that naturally? Because shining in good deeds and good words costs. It costs. Um, people will often hate you and dismiss you and not want to be around you and reject you because you're shining light in the darkness and they'd rather have it dark. But you still do it anyway. Uh, the fastest way to find emptiness and meaningless in life is just to not shine. You will find yourself empty and feeling like, what is this all about? Do the opposite. Grab hold as you go out into the workplace, speak good things and do good things and you're going to find yourself full because you're fulfilling your purpose. That's the first day way that we are like stars. We are both created to shine in the dark. Make sure you're doing that. The second way is found in verse 16. Verse 16, go back in that, it says, And God made two great lights, the greater light to govern or rule the day, and the lesser light to govern or rule the night. And what do real governors and rulers do? Real governors and rulers lead their nations. They, they, they lead. That's what a governor and rulers do. And that's what God created the, the moon and the stars to do at nighttime, to take over and lead. Now, you've been out on a, a night that was completely cloudy and there was no moon, there was no stars. It's very hard to get around. But when it's bright, and you got to, like last night was very bright, the moon was out, the stars were out, you could see. That's what God made them to do, to be able to lead people so they can get around at nighttime. That's why they're there. For most of human history, when people traveled the oceans, how'd they travel? The stars. They measured the distances and the places in the stars, and they could figure out where they were through celestial navigation. And probably the most clear way of stars leading, we're about to celebrate again, they remember the star leading the wise men to Bethlehem. They followed the star. Stars were given to lead people. And not just the stars, right? You and I were created to lead people. Uh, it says in Daniel 12, 3, a wonderful verse. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens. And those who lead many to righteousness will shine like what? Like the stars forever and ever. So here's the second way that we are similar to stars in your insert, to lead people in the dark. Not just to shine in the dark, but to lead people in the dark. That's why the stars are there, and that's why we are here. Not just to shine through our good works, but to lead through our good works. Uh, who are the ones shining like stars forever and ever? Those who lead many to righteousness or to right living. Those who lead other people to right living are going to shine. And I believe that's in both sense, that you're, we're literally going to shine in our bodies in the new world. But also we're going to shine in a brilliant, you know, outstanding, excellent, moral way also in heaven. And this was the job of John the Baptist, if you remember. Jesus the king is coming, but Israel was in no way ready. No way ready for their king. 
So God, ahead of John the Baptist, sent on John the Baptist, and it says, he will turn many of the sons of Israel back to the Lord their God. So John's job was to take Israel by the hand and turn them around and get them moving in the direction of God now so that when Jesus the king comes, they would be ready to accept him. And that's exactly our role, just like John's. That is our role in this world. Uh, James 5.19 says, If any among you strays from the truth, and one of you turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of their way will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. That's speaking to us. John the Baptist took Israel and led them into the light of right, living the right way. And my job and your job is to take people who are straying and help them come out of the darkness into the light. That's what we're here for, to lead people out of darkness into light, just like stars. Is there someone in your life that you know that is straying? Maybe they don't know God at all, but maybe they're a Christian who is straying. You have a responsibility to lead them out of darkness into light. Don't just let it go. Reach out to them, move toward them. If they don't want your attention, then pray hard. Stay with them. If you were straying and you didn't care, you would want someone to be able to help you get back on the right path. Don't let go of them. Even if it, you have to do it behind the scenes, continue to pray for them and help them so that they're moving toward God. We all need each other. The whole world needs us to be able to point people in the darkness in the right direction. That's the, one of our jobs. The stars are created to lead people in the dark. We were created to lead people in the dark. Are you leading people that are around you? Don't ignore them. Move toward them and help lead them. That's the second way we share similarities with stars. A third way we find in verse 14 uh, talks about the purpose God puts stars in the sky. See, that it says they are to be lights for seasons and days and years. Season, days, and years. That's why they're up there. What is that? That's time. Seasons, days, years. For centuries, the sun and moon and stars were used to tell time. You have a sundial that told people time. Uh, people measured and watched the sun, moon, and stars for the different seasons. So now is when we plant. Uh, now is when we have certain religious holidays, when the moon is at this place or that place. For many, many years, the stars were the main way that people told time. That's one of the reasons God put the stars up there. And in the future, the stars are really going to express the time clearly. It says in Matthew 24, 29, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from the sky. What a terrifying thing. Can you imagine what you would be thinking as you saw that? And the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. Many people have been, claimed to be Christ through the years. Come follow me, I'm... I'm the one God has sent. But this says there's one way to know the real time when the real Christ comes, and that is you're going to be star seeing stars fall from the heavens, the heavens themselves shaken. That will be a, a indication of the correct time. And not only do they have that job, we share that same purpose in this world to tell people the correct time. It says in Romans 13, or yes, you know the times in which we are living, and it's time for you to wake up. The night is almost over and the day is near. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. People today are asleep to God's timetable of when Christ is going to return. People are just making choices, making plans, the way they speak, the way they act, the way they uh, spend their money. There's no thought of the timetable that Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is going to return and they're going to be held accountable for what they've done and how they have reacted to Christ. People have no clue of that. But these verses are telling us, listen, Christians, make sure you're not asleep like the rest of the world to the timetable that's going on. Christ is coming and he's coming soon. It says in Hebrews 10, 13, in a very little while, he who is coming will come and not delay. And we're supposed to be living that way. And then when we live that, light, that way, we are telling the world the correct time. 
The time is coming where Christ is coming. And so when they see us and they see the way we are making plans and setting our priorities and spending our money and well, the things we're pursuing in this world, it's not for the temporary things that are going to be gone, but it's for the eternal kingdom of God seeking first his kingdom. And as we live that way, we are like a clock to them, showing them, look, the time is short. The real time of Christ is coming. Get ready for it. So a, a third similar purpose that we have with the stars and your inserts is to tell the correct time through our lives, through our words, to tell the correct time. Are you living that way so that people see your life and realize, whoa, I, I probably need to shape up. I see her and the way she spends her time and her priorities and what she does, uh, that makes me think, Maybe I should be getting ready too. She's taking Christ so seriously. Are you being that type of person where others can see by the way you make choices in life that you're not living for the temporary, you're living for the kingdom of God? If others aren't seeing that in your life, change that. Live for the eternal things. Don't store up treasures on earth. Store up treasures in heaven. The time is short. And the one who's coming will come and it's going to be over. Your life is being watched by others. As you go to work, as you move about the community, as you go to the store, your watch is, life's being watched by others, and you're telling them what time it is. And hopefully your life is being lived in such a way you're telling them the correct time. Christ is coming, and I'm going to live seriously as if he's coming today. That's how we're supposed to be living. That's a third similar purpose we share with stars. A fourth similar purpose we have with stars. <clears throat> Look at the middle of verse 14. God says, right before he talks about them being a time indicator, but also verse 14 says, let them be for signs. Signs. We have signs all around us. You drive down the freeway, you see a sign for a gas station, you see a sign for a jewelry store, you see a sign for an exit to a road you want to take. What are signs for? Signs are tell, tell us to, uh, to point us in a certain direction. Right? That's what a sign does. That's what this means here. One of the reasons stars were created was to draw people's attention in a certain direction. And you know the well-known verse in Psalm 19. The heavens, the stars, are telling the glory of God. And their expanse is declaring the work of his hands. When you go out on a starry night, what is your reaction supposed to be? It's supposed to be, look how great God is. Those are signs pointing to the fact that God is great and powerful. And God says... I also make the people of this world to do the same thing, to be pointing to me uh, as the, the, the reason what they're doing. Look at the parallel here. The stars show the glory of God. Again, Matthew 5, let your light shine before men in such a way that they see your good works and do what? Glorify your Father. Stars point to the glory of God. We point to the glory of God. That's why we made, he made human beings. That's why he made you. Your purpose is to point people's attention to God. You know, they say on a clear night, a human eye can see about 3,000 stars. That's 3,000 signs saying, look at God. Look how great he is. And every day, you move among people at the store, in the neighborhood, at work, and you give off a 1,000 different actions and words and attitudes, and each one of those things is supposed to be saying, look at God. Your words, look at God. Your actions, look at God. So when you're patient with people who are unkind, when you're loving toward people who are your enemies, when you're doing good for people who are in needs, all those say, look at God. And when you're speaking words of encouragement, when you're speaking kind things, when you're speaking about the change Jesus has made in your life, all those, look at God, look at God, look at God. You are to walk around as a billboard for God every day. That's why he created the stars. That's why he created you. Are you doing that well? Do you need to change some of the way you're reacting to problems at work? The way you're expressing your frustration? The way you might need to stop complaining, stop worrying, stop gossiping? All those things do not glorify God. But God is saying, clean up your life. Because this only works if we have pure lives. 
it, one of the greatest verses on this subject is Philippians 2.15. You are to live clean and innocent lives as God, children of God in a dark world full of crooked and perverse people among whom you shine like stars in the world. Here God says you are just like stars here, but only works if you shine purely. If you are, have bad attitudes and you're not speaking the way you should, not acting the way you should, you're just like the, the crooked generation around us and you're not doing any good to bring glory to God. God says, take responsibility for the way you speak. Take responsibility for the way you act and behave the right way so that when people see you, God gets the credit for it. One of the major reasons you're in this world, just like the stars, is to point to him. To point to him. Uh, that's the fourth similar purpose that we have in your insert, to point people to God. That's why you exist, to point people to God. Sometimes, again, people appreciate that. Like the Philippian jailer who sees Paul and Silas in jail and the way they're acting, he says, I want to join your God. And sometimes people don't appreciate that as when Stephen preached to the Jewish leaders of his day and they saw his words and they heard his, uh, his actions and words and they did not want the God he was talking about and they rejected God and rejected Stephen so much to the point where they ended up killing him. Was Stephen a failure? No. The response of others has nothing to do with the success or failure of the star, of the, of the person. You shine. Whether people respond or not, you shine. Even when it costs you, you shine. And you've done your job. Do you need to change anything about the way you are shining? People all around you need pointing to God. And God says, I've chosen you to do it. In your workplace, you are my sign to point people to God. Make sure you're living like that sign. They need you to live like that sign. So four reasons how we're different or similar to the stars. And as I said, none of this is brand new to us. But for some reason, God moved me to present that this morning. Which of those did you need to hear? Which of those did you need to hear? that you need to shine in the dark, or that you need to lead people in the dark, that you need to be living to tell the correct time that Jesus is coming soon, or that you need to live right because your life is pointing people to God. If there's anything you need to change, change it today. As I said, there's all over the world, people don't know what their purpose is, and their lives are meaningless because they just are wandering. You are the answer, like part of the answer that God has put on this planet to help point people to their real meaning and purpose in life. All of us are here to direct attention to God and our fulfillment and satisfaction in life is found in owning that, grabbing hold of that and doing that. If you're looking for purpose and meaning in this world, grab hold of your role as being a light like the stars and shine like them. That's what God has for us this morning. Let's take that and live that, all of us. Let's take that and live that.